what matters about this kind of engineering is precision, but also scale. Precision demanded the control over very small quantities of matter, where very slight errors would have fatal effects, and where customer demand increasingly pulls watch and clock makers towards more and more complex geared tools, which mean not only that they can make one clock which works, but they can make hundreds and, in principle, thousands. So even though we still don't have anything like the mechanization of production within a watchmaker's shop, what we do have is the possibility of large-scale manufacture by combining uh, these tools into reproducible parts which can be substituted for each other, which can be standardized. You start to get the rudiments by the 1700s of mass production. And in the clock-making trades, this matters enormously because it's precisely devices like this which allow any kind of feedback mechanism to, to be built. It's from clockwork that the basic machinery of feedback and mechanical control develops. So the first stationary steam engines, which are built in England in the early 18th century, uh, 1710, 1720, rely explicitly for their feedback and their stability on what clockmakers can do in the clockmaking workshops. By the end of the 18th century, these kinds of mechanical skills are diffused quite widely in Britain. So you have standardization, interchangeable parts, you have precision engineering, increasing demands for tools which allow the manipulation of metal and glass to very high tolerances. And without that base, and I think especially without the ability to produce fantastically reliable, reproducible, and in a relatively large number, um, governors, in, in other words, machines which control mechanical performance, the moving steam engine, the locomotive, is simply unimaginable.